Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of New Westminster's online Sunday celebration service. Please join in for our opening song this morning, Swing Wide the Doors. doors to let in the light, bring in the dawn for humankind, swing wide the doors of this heart of mine, here we go now. Welcome back. I am Reverend Rona Segura, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our Sunday celebration service at Unity of New Westminster in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. 
whether you are watching us live on Zoom or on Facebook or on YouTube, or whether you are finding us on demand after the service, it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of all of us here. We would love to stay connected with you. So please subscribe to our newsletter on our website or subscribe to our YouTube channel or join our Facebook group. And that way you will be notified anytime we have a service. We are so glad that you are part of our experience today. The Unity Movement offers ideas for full and abundant living. We draw on the teachings of Jesus, who we consider our primary way shower and example. And we honor that there is wisdom in faith traditions all over the world. We respect every person's right to choose their own spiritual path their own life path. All are welcome here. All are worthy here. All are celebrated here. We open our service today in prayer. I gratefully acknowledge that I speak to you on the traditional and unceded territory of the Semiamu First Nation. And we give thanks to First Nation peoples everywhere for their custody of this beautiful land. We give thanks for our connection one with each other. That connection that happens whether we are in each other's physical presence or not. The connection that binds us all together. We acknowledge that there is only one presence. That there is only one power. That power that is understood by many names many faces and many paths. And we affirm that regardless of the name, the face, or the path of our understanding, that we are one human family. And it is in that knowledge of our oneness that we send a blessing for love, for peace, for contentment to every being on this planet, to every being, regardless of all the labels that threaten to divide us. We are one. And for this knowledge, for this intention and for the power that we have to bless, we give thanks. Amen. Get ready, my soul. I'm driving in, get ready, my soul. I'm driving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready. Get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done, everything I've ever seen, everything I've lost or won, everything I've ever dreamed. Has brought me here 
A few months ago, on the Sunday closest to July 1st, which happened to be July 4th, our Sunday service was a discussion between Lyle Dellingham, Aaron Johansson, and myself. We spoke about the children's graves which had been found in the Kamloops in residential school district. And it was a powerful discussion one that moved many people and shifted perspectives, providing a new understanding and appreciation of the residential school system and how colonial culture has affected people who are indigenous to this country. During that discussion, we committed to finding ways to demonstrate and expand our inclusivity. And to support that goal, the process of creating a medicine wheel labyrinth is now underway. And that is super exciting. More will follow about that in the next few months. We also committed to learning more about indigenous teachings and today I am honored to introduce Lyle Dellingham as our guest speaker. Lyle has been a voice of wisdom and love and healing and advocacy. Many of the people who watched that service in July, including some of my friends in the United States, were moved by Lyle's wisdom and compassion, so much so that they now refer to Lyle by name when they speak to me. Lyle has been a member of Unity of New Westminster for many years, and with his husband Cliff, 
Lyle leads our community outreach team, sharing our message of empowerment and acceptance at pride celebrations and other community festivals. His message today is about the seven sacred teachings. Welcome, my friend, Lyle Dellingham. A few months ago, on the Sunday, good morning and welcome. I am glad that you are here to listen and learn about the seven sacred teachings. They are something that are universal to everyone. Everyone can learn and use them to live a successful and prosperous life. And hopefully you will too, as you hear these teachings. So please just sit back, listen, take in what you need, and understand the seven sacred teachings. It is now time to open your hearts to Grandfather Universe, Father Sun, Grandmother Moon, Mother Earth, and to all the flyers, swimmers, walkers, crawlers, burrowers, and standing ones. Accept these teachings of Grandfather Rock, the elements, and the colors of the seven sacred dimensions. Be open to all your relations so that through them you can walk your journey through life. All my relations means all. When I refer to this statement, or all your relations, it's meant in recognition of the principles of harmony, unity, and equality. It's a way of saying that you recognize your place in the universe and that you recognize the place of others and of other things in the realm of the real and the living. I will talk of the teachings in sequence. When you follow these seven sacred teachings, you might then live in peace and harmony with all your relations. The four directions of the medicine wheel, as you will come, as you will see, represent the four colors of two leggings, yellow in the east, red in the south, black in the west, and white in the north. There are also three other directions, up, down, and within. I will take you on this journey by traveling medicine wheel and the other three directions. The first of these seven sacred teachings is humility. Wolf represents humility. He wants you to think of others before yourself. Humble yourself to the Great Spirit by being thankful. Begin this journey in the spring, in the east. East is where all life begins, and yellow best represents this first teaching. Every day, the beauty and power of creation are ignited in the east. Are you not humbled by the strength and brilliance of the rising sun? Can you not sense that there is something much stronger than you out there? Accept how small and insignificant you are for the betterment of yourself and all creation. Strive to be humble. Look to Wolf, my Yingen. He does not live for himself, but for the pack. Watch him bow his head in the presence of others. He does this out of deference, not fright. My Ingen understands what a small part of the world he actually plays. His ultimate punishment is to be cast away from his community. Learn this kind of humility. Learn not to be arrogant. Do not think too highly of yourself. Do not want for yourself. Become my Ingen. Become humble. Tobacco, sage, cedar, and sweetgrass are the four sacred plants. Of these, tobacco is the most important. Always carry tobacco with you so you can offer it in thanks. And to ponder this teaching, find a quiet place under the tree that best represents humility. That tree is aspen. And pray. The second sacred teaching is honesty. 
Bigfoot represents honesty. He wants you to never lie or gossip, to be honest with yourself and others. Speak from your heart, be true to your word. Come summer, travel south where the sun is at its highest. There, learn honesty. The sun is red hot and you are living your youth. This is the midday of your journey. Now is the time for you to be honest with yourself. See and accept yourself for who you are. Then, and only then, might you accept others for who they are. Be honest with yourself as well as with others. When you speak, speak truthfully. Sabe, or rather Bigfoot, is the four-legged who walks on two legs. Sabe reminds us to be ourselves and not someone we are not. An honest person is said to walk tall like Sabe. He understands honesty. He accepts himself and knows how to use his gift. He does not seek power, speed, or the beauty of others. He uses what he has been given to survive and to thrive. So must you. To want more than you have been given is to suggest that the Creator has not given you enough. You have enough. Here, protect and ground yourself with cedar. To ponder this teaching, find a quiet place under the cottonwood tree and pray. The next sacred teaching is respect. Buffalo represents respect. He wants you to respect all life on Mother Earth. To respect elders and people of all races. The essence of respect is to give. In the fall, travel west. The sun sets in the west as Turtle Island becomes black. Look to Buffalo, Ashkode Biziki, for one who models respect and honor him. That Bashkode Biziki offers himself to sustain you does not make his life any less than yours. It makes it more. Not long ago, countless Bashkode Biziki roamed the West. It was said that he would disappear if he was not respected. Is respect like Bashkode Biziki disappearing from Turtle Island? Do not waste. Use all things wisely. Never take more than you need and always give that which you do not use. Treat others as you would have them treat you, respectfully. Learn respect and learn balance. What goes up will come down. What you do for others will be done for you. What you give away will always come back to you in one circle. When pondering this teaching, burn sage under the red cedar and pray. The next sacred teaching is courage. Bear represents courage. And he wants you to listen to your heart. It takes courage to do what is right. Go north in winter. On northern white plain, you will come to understand how life moves from one world to the next. Look to Bear, Makwa, to model courage. You are older now. Your hair is white. You are in the winter of your life. You have learned much. You understand to always act on what is right for you and for your family. To do what is right is not easy. It takes courage. It takes courage to heal that which is not well within you before being reborn. Become a healer. Become Makwa. Just as courage sleeps in Wakwa through the long winter months, it is dormant within you. It need only be awakened. Observe Makwa fight when her young are being threatened. She will not stop until the, she overcomes any and all threats. In your life, you will need this kind of courage to transform fears that might prevent you from living a good life. 
Makwa shows you to face fear and danger. Sweet grass is the hair of Mother Earth. Braid her hair before you cut it. Leave her an offering of tobacco. And to ponder this teaching, find a quiet place under northern fir and pray. The next sacred teaching is wisdom. Beaver represents wisdom. Everyone has a special gift. Show wisdom by using your gift to build a peaceful world. You now have traveled the way of the medicine wheel. Now look up to the blue of the sky for wisdom. Look to beaver, Amik, for wisdom. Amik has formidable teeth. Do you know what will become of Amik if he does not use his gift? His teeth will grow until they are no longer of any use to him. They will hinder him. Amik uses his gift wisely to thrive, and so must you. To build your life based on your unique gift is to live wisely. You are not the same as your neighbor. You were created special. You are one of a kind. So is your neighbor. So are the trees and flowers. You need only look to see that this is so. When living wisely, do not ask questions. Watch and listen. Notice what is going on around you. Observe your life and the lives of others. By watching and listening, you can learn everything you need to know. Knowledge can be learned. Wisdom must be lived live and learn. Look into any clear lake. You do not see your reflection. You only see that of those who came before you. Through all your relations and this teaching of wisdom, you will come to use your gift to direct your life's journey. Do not live life based on what you wish you were. Live on what you are. If you have been given the gift of song, then sing. If yours is the gift to build, then build. Now it is time to ponder over life, death, and rebirth. Be grateful for the gift that you have been given in life. Feed on corn, the first of the three sisters. Then to ponder this teaching, find a poplar tree and pray. The next sacred teaching is truth. Turtle represents truth. Always seek truth. Living the truth is living the seven teachings. Truth is to know all these things. Look down toward Mother Earth. Everything returns to her. Truth lies in spirit. Pray every day. And when you can, pray under a tree, at sunrise if possible. Ask yourself only when, for yourself only when there is no other recourse. And give thanks always. Give thanks with tobacco. When you are thankful, good will come to you and those you love. Mother Earth was created on the back of a turtle. Miskwadisi. Look to Miskwadisi to understand truth. There are 13 moons on her back, one for each moon cycle of an earth revolution around the sun. The 13 moons on the 13 grandmothers are signs that Mother Earth cares for you. Look to Miskwadisi for one whose existence is strong and stable. Slow moving Miskwadisi understands, as you should, that the journey of life is as important as the destination. Feed on beans, the second of the three sisters. Then find an oak tree. You can rely on the powerful oak to always be there as a sign of this word for you and pray. The last of the seven teachings is love. Eagle represents love. Always act in love. Love the creator. Love the earth, 
love yourself, your family, and your fellow human being. Look within yourself for love. Love yourself and then love others. You cannot love another until you first learn to love yourself. You must understand and live the other six teachings before you can love. Love is worth working for. Love is worth waiting for. Love is the key to life. There is no shortcut to achieving the state of love, and you cannot know love unless you are courageous. You cannot know love unless you are honest. Love is based on the wisdom to understand oneself and the humility to accept weaknesses as well as being proud of one's strengths. Love has at its very core these other teachings. This is why I speak of it last. The loving heart center of each true-hearted person lies within each of us. Love is deep violet and is modeled by eagle, Megizi. Megizi flies high above the earth and sees all that is true. Megizi is honest. She is courageous. She exemplifies all the teachings. Look to her as one who represents and models love. Honor her always. Feed on the third sister, Squash. From under the tree of peace, the white pine, pray and ponder the teaching of love. These teachings are not new to the world. The way you live is essential so that all may prosper and be happy. All you have to do is open your heart and listen. Understand the teachings. Live by them. Each teaching exists in every creation. Every four-legged has something of the Creator. Every plant, every flower, and every tree has something of the Creator. Every shape, size, and color has something of the Creator. Look to them in all you see and in everything you are. Recognize and honor them. And most of all, be grateful. Be thankful. It is good to give thanks. Miigwech. In the morning of my life, I shall look to the sunrise. At a moment in my life when the world is new. And the blessing I shall lose is that God will grant me to be brave and strong and true, and to fill the world with my whole life through, and to fill the world with love, and to fill the world with love, and to fill. Moment in my life when the night is 
you are invited to join us on Mondays at 11 o'clock for our weekly prayer service. It is a time where we get together on Zoom and we connect with each other. We share how we are doing with each other. We move into a time of guided prayer and we read the names of the people who are on our prayer list. And it is a time of renewal, of connection. It is a profound experience of recentering. And so I invite you to join us for that. And if you would like your name or you know someone who you would like to have added to that prayer list, then please email us at unityofnewwestminster at gmail.com and we'll be sure to have the person's name or your name added to our list. Mondays at 11. The annual Unity Canada Conference will be held on Zoom on Friday, October 22nd, Saturday, October 23rd, and Sunday, October 24th. The theme this year is Bridging the Divide, Living as Oneness. This content-rich program includes a Friday evening session from 5 till 7 p.m. Pacific time with my friend, Reverend Dr. Martha Creek. On Saturday afternoon, Kiko Ojo Thompson of the Kojo Institute will host a workshop called A Call to Action, Doing the Work for Racial Equity. This workshop explores the ways in which racism and other inequities play out in religious and faith-based institutions in Canada, despite our good intentions. This will be followed by a panel in which we explore this question. How can we equip ourselves and our ministries for Indigenous allyship for truth and reconciliation? The Kojo Institute specializes in inclusion and anti-racism training and has worked with many organizations, including the Toronto School Board, the RCMP, and the Ontario Association of Children's Aid Societies. The annual business meeting for Unity Canada, which will include the election of new officers and the financial report, will be held on Saturday morning, October 23rd. And on Sunday, my other friends, Reverend Ogan Holder and Reverend Kelly Isola, will host our first ever nationwide Sunday service on Zoom. On that day, our service here at Unity of New Westminster will begin early with 30 minutes of music beginning at 9.30 Pacific time. And the service itself will begin at 10 a.m. Pacific time. The Sunday service will be followed by a workshop on digital ministry hosted by Kelly and Ogan. In this workshop, they will share information and insights about the reality of ministry today, ministry which includes both physical and digital aspects, both in person and online. The musician for the entire weekend is the amazing David Roth. One of his songs is May the Light of Love Be With You, which we have played periodically in the last year or so. Attendance at the annual business meeting on the Saturday morning and the Sunday service is completely free. The fee to attend the three workshop sessions on Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon is $80 if you register before September 30th, and $100 after September 30th. All are welcome to attend. Invite your family and your friends for what is sure to be a richly inspiring and entertaining weekend. The Unity Canada 
annual conference, October 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, with the theme, Bridging the Divide, Living as Oneness. See you there. There are many ways to give to our ministry at Unity of New Westminster, and we are grateful for the financial support which we receive from regular as well as one-time donors. Your generosity helps us to support our ministry and continue to share inspiring ideas for full and abundant living. We also support organizations that serve people in our neighborhood, in our province, and in our nation. Donations can be made through Interact electronic transfer, credit card, check, or cash. Please give from your sense of appreciation and your feeling of abundance. And thank you for supporting Unity of New Westminster. I invite you now to hold whatever you feel blessed for in your hands, in your heart, financial, family, roof over your head, food on the table, just whatever you are feeling blessed with as we sing our blessing song. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all. And we come to the end of another service. I thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed your experience with us today. I wish you all a very, very blessed week. Goodbye, everybody.
I am the light of God. I am the love of God. I am the power of God. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is. I am the light of God. I am the love of God. I am the power of God. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is. You are the light of God. You are the love of God. You are the power of God. You are the presence of God. Wherever you are, God is. You are the light of God. You are the love of God. You are the Ah!